All right. Right now I'm going to solve a problem that comes from your second homework assignment. It's problem number five from sections 1.5 through 1.7. And it's a radical equation, so named because there's a variable underneath the radical sign. You're taking the square root of an expression that includes our variable. And usually when you have to solve equations like this, the typical trick we use is called you're squaring both sides of the equation. Um, in this particular one, we're actually going to do that twice. Squaring both sides of the equation when you set it up uh, with a radical, one of the radical expressions on one side, it makes the radical quote go away. It, it's the inverse operation, right? This principal square root says, what number do I square to get 4x plus 1? If I then square that number, I get 4x plus 1, assuming that this is a non-negative number. So let's just dive in and start doing this. First, I need to isolate one of the terms. I'm going to leave this term on one side, and we're going to add negative, I mean, we're going to add x minus 2 to both sides. Square root of x minus 2. I said x minus 2, but I meant the square root of x minus 2. We're going to add the square root of x minus 2 to both sides. So I get the square root principal square root of 4x plus 1. That's equal to principal square root of x minus 2 plus 3. And now we're going to square both sides. This side again, this is what number do I square to get 4x plus 1? Square that number and I get 4x plus 1. When I square this side, you treat this as a binomial. I've got this first term and the second term. The first term, I, I, this, when I square a binomial, I get a special form called the perfect square trinomial. You should be familiar with those without having to foil this out. My first term is the first term squared. Uh, the first term squared again. What number do I square to get x minus 2? Square that number and I get x minus 2. That's my first term. My middle term is 2 times a times b. 2 times 3 times the square root of negative 2, which is 6, square root of x minus 2. And then finally, 3 squared, which is plus 9. Let's simplify a little bit by combining like terms. This is x plus 7 plus 6, square root x minus Two. And now, again, I want to isolate this radical term so I can use my squaring trick again to make this second radical go away. So I'm going to subtract x and subtract 7 from both sides. And I get 3x minus 6 is equal to 6, principal square root, x minus 2. And rather than dividing everything by 6 and having a bunch of fractions to deal with, at this point I'm just going to divide by the common factor of 3 and get x minus 2 is equal to 2, principal square root of x minus 2. At this point, I'm going to use our trick again of squaring both sides. This term is again going to be a perfect square trinomial. x squared minus 4x plus 4. Squaring a product is the product of the square. So 2 squared is 4. And then again, the principal square root of x minus 2 squared is just x minus 2. I can use the distributive property to simplify this. This is 4x minus 8. And now I have a quadratic equation on one side, a linear equation on the other. And to find out when these two are equal, I'm going to subtract, set one side equal to the quadratic, polyn uh, a quadratic uh, polynomial and the other side equal to 0 and try to factor. That's the main tool that we have. So I'm going to subtract 4x and add 8. Subtract 4x and add 8. And I end up with x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. To solve this by factoring, uh, I can factor by grouping. Okay, So the AC methods, A is 1, C is 12. So AC is 12. I want factors of 12 that equal, whose sum is negative 8. And that sounds like negative 6 and negative 2. 
So I can split my middle term, x squared minus 6x minus 2x, that's the negative 6 and the negative 2 that multiply out to 12, plus 12. I can factor by grouping. So at this point, I can factor an x out of the first term. That's x minus 6. And here I can factor a negative 2 out of this. So this leaves me with x minus 6 equals 0. And then I can factor an x minus 6 off of both of these terms. It leaves me with x minus 2 times x minus 6 equals 0. Foil it out real quick to check in my head x squared minus 2x minus 6x is minus 8x plus 12, yes. So I checked it with a foil in my head. And now I can use the zero product property to say x minus 2 equals 0 or x minus 6 equals 0 should solve this. That means x equals 2 or x equals 6. Looking at my original equation, I need to check and see if that works. So in my original equation, if I plug x in for 2, I can evaluate this expression. I'm going to get the principal square root of 4 times 2 plus 1 minus the principal square root of 2 minus 2. And I want to know, is that 3? Well, this is just 8 plus 1, principal square root of 9. This is 2 minus 2. This is principal square root of 0, which is 3 minus 0. Indeed, that's 3. So my first answer works. Let's try the second answer real quick. Principal square root of 4 times 6 plus 1 minus the principal square root of 4 minus 2, sorry, 6, x is equal to 6, not 4, minus 2, is that equal to 3? Well, what I've got here real quick, let me move this up a little. Um, this is 24 plus 1, principal square root of 25. This is 6 minus 2 is minus principal square root of 4, which is 5, minus 2, which is indeed 3 and we're done. The answers are x equals 2 or x equals 6.